Good morning, everyone. It is uh, still a mess out here. My boat is still in shambles. There's boxes everywhere. Nothing got cleaned up since the last video, and I feel like every time I film a video, it gets a little bit messier and messier. My buddy Nathan and I, we have a little spot that we want to go to. If everything holds out and the water, weather stays warm, water warms up and that ice melts just a little bit more. So hopefully we'll get out fishing this weekend. So I gotta get this thing cleaned up. But today's video is really gonna be a nerd out video. We're gonna kind of dive into craws and the different style of craws that I fish based on the time of year I'm fishing and based on the situation that I'm using the baits. This is gonna be a really in-depth video kind of talking about the crazy things that go on in my mind to make the decisions that I'm making. And I think you guys might enjoy it. But it kind of comes because of that last video, I had a little caveat talking about, you know, finesse jig trailers and like supernatural craws versus more unnatural, bigger kind of crawfish profile. But before we dive into that, I just want to share with you guys something that I'm super stoked on. And this is something that I've worked on for a little while now and I've had on my channel in the past. If you guys have been around for a while, you guys have heard of the No Wake Nation. The No Wake Nation is a play on my last name. So if you guys want to get your hands on one of these very limited stickers, there are 25 stickers in this pack here. Go down to the BR Noak Fishing website. I'll have a link down in the description below. You can pick one of these bad boys up, $3.99, and join the No Wake Nation. Now what we're going to be talking about in this video, as I kind of already mentioned, is basically the different styles of craws that there are out there, or jig trailers in the way that I use them in my fishing situations. We're gonna start by talking about the finesse craw that I was talking about in that last video. And if you didn't watch the spring baits video, this is the craw that I was talking about. This is the do it molds eye craw. I actually poured this bait over on the bait making channel, but this is a super realistic 3D style crawfish bait. You have your little pinchers, you have your little arms coming off there, your appendages and it just looks like a very natural crawfish profile. And this to me is gonna be a great trailer when fish are very finicky, when the water is clear, when the water is cold or you're in pressured situations, and you just want a very natural profile on the back of your jig or dragging around on a ball head or on a net rig. This is not something that's gonna move a lot of water. These craws really have no girth, so they're not gonna kinda of kick and they're not gonna flap. But when you want something that looks like a crawfish, those fish are really finicky, they're really keyed in on a very specific, you know, forage type, which would be crawfish. This is going to be a great presentation. And for me, this is going to be something I use early, early in the spring or after a cold front or in really clear water situations. So the way that I'm going to rig that up typically is going to be on a very finesse style jig. This is a three aught half ounce jig. So the three aught hook in there, it's a small hook. Um, living rubber skirt, that living rubber flares out really, really big underwater a little bit of flashy boot, and then that uh, eye craw trailer. I did trim it down just a little bit, so it's a very finesse profile. It's a small jig profile, but it looks super natural in the water, and it's gonna be able to draw a lot of bites from really finicky fish. This is gonna be a go-to presentation for me in the springtime when things are tough in clear water situations. One of my favorite jig trailers of all time, though, which is what we're gonna move into next, is the Berkeley Chigger Craw. The Berkeley Chigger Craw, if you could only buy one craw on the market, this is gonna be the one that I would recommend. The Chigger Craw really has a unique action and it's more of like a flapping action. It's not like a hard kick, like some of the other ones we're gonna be talking about. It's more of like a flapping action and it just kind of moves up and down. It doesn't kick really hard, but it looks fairly natural. It does have a little bit of bigger presence underwater. Now the one I'm gonna show you guys is in green pumpkin color and it's in the four inch size but you have these longer pinchers that will stand up underwater. They'll move a little bit of water, kind of flap and curl, but it's not an overbearing presentation. A lot of times when you're fishing throughout the year, you get these really heavy, really hard kicking baits like a swim bait or like a chatter bait or these things that move a lot of water all the time. And for me, I think what that does is basically condition fish to those hard kicking, hard thumping motions, whereas a chigger craw just kind of naturally undulates and flares and flaps its, its arms or craws under there and it will draw some bites from those fish. Another thing I like about this is the fact that it's scented. To me, when fish are really keyed in on a bait and it's semi-clear water situation where you're fishing a jig, having something with scent might give you a couple extra bites and it's a pretty small presentation. Now this craw here can be fished either on the back of a jig or you can put it just on a Texas rig or a ball head. But my favorite application for this is putting it on like a half ounce flipping style jig and flipping it around, which is 
basically this jig right here. The way I'm gonna fish this is skip it around docks, flip it around cover, and because it doesn't have those hard kicking motions, I can flip it into cover really effectively, and it goes into grass, around wood. It's just a really good all around craw presentation. But that's my favorite craw that I'm gonna fish probably 80% of the time. That's my go-to craw. Most situations, if I'm fishing a jig, that's gonna be the craw that I'm having on the back of there, especially like a flipping jig or a skipping jig. Now that's gonna move us into the next topic, the next bait that I wanna discuss with you guys, and that is chunks. A chunk is a very unique presentation because it's sort of an old school way to fish a jig, but it's still a really effective presentation to get bites, especially in cold water. But of the presentations, this is the one that I'm gonna use the very least. I would say I've caught maybe a handful of fish fishing a chunk style bait on the back of my jig up here in Michigan. It's not because it doesn't work. It's just something that I don't have a ton of faith in and it's sort of seasonal or, or very application specific. A chunk, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this bait and it doesn't look like much, right? There's, there's not a lot of appendages. It doesn't really do much. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this bait and you're going to, like the application or like the name implies, basically chunk it onto your jig. So you're gonna take this thick section and you're gonna go on first with that. You wanna rig it directly in the center Otherwise, it's not gonna run true. I'm gonna give you a little guide on there. And you're just going to chunk it onto your jig. And it doesn't look that great. I promise you guys, you guys are like, wow, that looks absolutely terrible. But what you're gonna notice is that it is a very, very large presentation. But it's a really good cold water technique because it doesn't move a lot of water. But when that water is dirty, when that water is off colored, it can be a good way to trigger bites from fish and get them to notice your bait in those dirty water applications. For me, this is something that I'm gonna to go to when that water is off colored or when I know those fish are feeding on bait fish in particular because it is a big profile. It has more of a bait fish or bluegill style profile in the water and it really doesn't have a lot of movement. But what's nice about having a chunk on there is it's free swinging side to side and up and down. So you're gonna get a lot of natural movement out of the chunk on your jig. However, it's not gonna have a lot of kicking or flaring. So in cold water applications, when you want something to slow your jig down, have a slower fall, a big bulky piece of plastic on the back of that jig, this is gonna be a really good application and uh, it's gonna stand out in dirty water situations. The only place I've had great luck with the chunk is down in Florida with my buddy Mikey Balls. Dude was on this epic big fish bite. We were fishing a chunked um, bait on the back of our jig and caught a bunch of big fish, six, seven pounders. And the deal there was we were fishing around deep water bluegills, big profile, dragging this thing around deep water, and we ended up catching a ton of fish on it. But for me, up here in the north, this is gonna be my go, my least go-to application. It's gonna basically be something that I might do occasionally if that water gets really off colored or that water cools down a little bit, but it's not something that I do a whole ton. And then this final application or this final style of craw is going to be your hard kicking bait with a lot of flanges. That would be like your Strike King Rage Craw. That would be like your Zoom Z Craw. Um, it would be like your Zoom Speed Craw, which is one of the probably most popular baits on the market. But what it has are these big claws and then it has these flanges on the end. These are going to kick really, really hard. It's a hard paddle, it's a hard wave because of those flanges, or if you're looking at a speed craw, the reason it's gonna move so much water is because you have these hooked claws like this. What that's gonna do is catch water, it's gonna flap really hard, be really, really rapid paced movements, and it's gonna be great for when you want a lot of movement on the back of your jig. For me, the go-to application for this is in warmer water situations or on a bait that you wanna have a lot of lift. When I talk about lift, you think if something is having a lot of drag or, or flapping really hard in the water, what it's gonna do is cause that bait to rise or lift up in the water column. So when I'm gonna to go to this most often is on the back of a swim jig. You guys have seen it in the past videos. I have fished um, these hard flapping baits on the back of a swim jig. And so my go-to trailer this year is actually a new bait from Berkeley called the Berkeley Chigger Bug. It's sort of like a dual tail grub, right? But it has these huge paddles on the back 
and that's going to kick a lot of water, move a lot of water. And because they're so large, if you guys can tell this, I hope you can, they're really, really big paddles. It's gonna move a lot of water, keep that jig higher in the column, and it's going to allow that bait to swim and kind of allow me to really control the depth that it's swimming at. A lot of times guys are fishing swim baits on the back of their swim jigs. My problem with that is it becomes really hard to determine the depth that you're fishing that thing at, and it's hard to fish it over shallow cover. I like to fish like a three eighths on swim jig in six foot of water, which is a little bit heavy for most people, but the biggest deal is when you put one of these big flange style kicking style baits on the back, you can really control the depth really easily and you can bring it over cover really effectively. Whereas with a swim bait that doesn't have as much lift, doesn't have as much pull, you kind of have to really pay attention to how deep you're fishing it and it becomes less of a visual presentation and more of like a real presentation. Those are the different styles of craws. That's the way that I'm gonna use them. If I could only have one craw in my boat and this I had way, way back, man. I fished a chigger craw for years and years and years. This is the one that I'm gonna be going with, a four inch Berkeley chigger craw. It's not an overbearing presentation. You can fish it on a finesse jig. You can fish it on a flipping jig. You can even fish it on the back of a swim jig if you want, but it has sort of a flapping, kind of undulating profile, whereas a lot of these others are more technique specific. If the water gets really warm, you can go to that really hard flapping style, like the chigger bug. This is gonna be a great flipping bait, but it's also gonna be a great bait when you wanna move a lot of water underneath. But the chunk and the super realistic eye craw are very seasonal specific and very technique specific applications for me. And so they're gonna really have very, very specific times that I'm gonna use them. Hopefully this kind of lets you guys in on the mind that goes on or the things that go on in my mind throughout the year. I think about this stuff constantly. So this is stuff that I keep trying to refine and perfect or understand more throughout the year. So I hope that me sharing this with you gives you guys a little bit more insight on that and helps make you guys a better fisherman. But if you guys have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section down below. All these products will be linked. Again, get your hand on one of these No Wake Nation stickers. There are 20 of these. It is basically your red No Wake with the nation and black along the bottom. It's a die cut, it's a really cool sticker. So go down there, get your hands on one of those while they last because it's very limited supply for now. But as always, thank you guys for watching. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. Let's keep growing this community. Let's get to 25,000. We are so close. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. You guys have no idea how much you mean to me. I love you guys. And as always, take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion.